Everybody, I am so excited today and as you can see already my amazing guest today she is such a badass she's such a powerhouse she's a businesswoman she is the mom she's the author she's the speaker she's the wife but I mean most importantly I I love and admire you so much for the way you present yourself and the way you articulate yourself and for who you are. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Elena Cardone. Aww, thank you so much. That was amazing. Oh, uh, so here's the thing. I wanna ask you a question because everybody sees the powerhouse woman that you are today, but I wanna know what was Elena, like how old are your daughters right now? Nine and 11, soon to be 10 and 12. Okay. so. In around that age, mm -hmm. what were your dreams? What would your life look like? Like, tell me a little bit about that little girl. Oh, at those ages, I was like, good. I, I kind of grew up a tomboy, so I was playing in the neighborhood. Life hadn't really beat me up. I, was, I, I wasn't exposed to really horrendous things in the world. So yeah, at that age, I was, and I was always a visionary. So I wanted to be an actress even at that age. So I just thought anything was possible and nothing was going to stop me. So yeah, at that age, I was good. It was shortly after that age where things went downhill. So tell me about that. Okay, so briefly, when I was 13, I had my childhood friend who lived across the street and her house caught on fire and her and her mother perished in the fire. And so at 13, I witnessed that. And it was like not something I was could cope with and deal with at the time. And we were an amazing, loving family, no problems, but we didn't really delve into emotions very hmm. well. We didn't talk about our feelings. We just always forged forward. 
So that was a really hard thing for me to cope with. And so how I did that, because I talked to no one about, and I stuffed all that down. And literally the next day I went to school, like, mm, wow. like as if nothing had happened, like you just carry on. Right. And so then that, that's when I went down the path of kind of self-medicating and, you know, just going off the rails, like really didn't right. have a will to live, you know, until later on. But so I took like, so the, the, so then life happened at that point. Well, the, the bad part of life where it was just, you know, and then I lost a lot of confidence and will and, um, and I, I, and so I had to build myself back up from that sort of, I don't know if the word's degradation, but mm -hmm. certainly a degradation to that child who was nine years old. Like, I'm going to conquer the world and anything is par possible and I'm great in this. And there was a degradation with the drugs and, you know, the alcohol and the loss. And so then it just kind of broke. So from that broken person, I definitely had to reconstruct and build myself up. You know what's interesting because like and you you and I haven't had a conversation about this because last time when you gave me your book I read it in one night. Wow. And uh, a lot of times I was like I'm not a fast reader, you know, but it's like if the book grabs me, I'm going to finish it that same day. So I finished your book in one night. And I was just reading and it's like it, it our lives of course a little bit different, but uh, it, they are so similar in a lot of different ways because I was uh, told since I was a little girl that I'm strong and powerful, I can achieve anything I want mm. in life. And I believed that because I was so little and naive at that time, but then life started happening to me and I lost that strength. Right. I lost that mm -hmm. power through uh, abusive relationship, even though it was not physically abusive, mm. it was verbally abusive, mm -hmm. which in my particular case, I felt it's harder because like, how do you recover? I mean, it's like bruise is going to heal, mm -hmm. but how do you recover when you break my heart? Yeah. When you break my soul, yes. how do you recover from that? Yes. You know, how do you heal that? Mm -hmm. So tell me what was the influential part for you? How did you find the Elena badass for <laughs> you today? Um, there were several moments in my life that made me who I am. When I was 17, I knew no one and moved to Los Angeles to, I made a decision to make my life better and to turn it around from the New Orleans era. So that was one step. Then there was the step where, you know, I decided to get married. I never thought I wanted to be married or never wanted to have kids, but I made a commitment and, you know, I had to change kind of the way I was thinking. Then 2008 happened where we were on the verge of losing everything. And then I made another decision and that was to go all in on Grant because he had a better chance at the time to kind of get us out of the predicament that we were in financially. And so I wanted to create this thing called an empire, um, even though it was not what it is today. I mean, back then, like it was almost on the verge of right. annihilation. So, so that, that really, that commitment to myself, that commitment to grant, that commitment to building an empire, that commitment to never closing the curtains if we were to ever make it, um, every single step of the way, every single sacrifice of not going out or not having the designer this or that, or, um, you know, s s making decisions on who to surround myself with, what voices literally to listen to and what not to. The people that are like, when's enough enough? Or y'all work too hard or this and this. It's like create the distance for those people and just really hunker down. And then, you know, the badassery happens over time right. with consistent wins, like, you know, and, and consistency. And I think it, I don't, I don't think it just happens in one moment. I think it's a combination of continually executing on a mission in spite of getting, you know, metaphorically right. knocked out and, and learning from that and rebuilding and, and, and learning from your mistakes and taking responsibility from them and refusing to be a victim and refusing to say it was your fault that I failed, right. even if it does seem that way. And then every time I took responsibility for something and was able to apply it to my life and make it a little bit better, the more I could count on myself and the more I had self-confidence and, you know, grit and strength. And so all of that kind of accumulates into the person that I am today. 
I love it. I love it so much because like all of these words that you mentioned is like that's exactly what comes into, you know, building your confidence and being a strong woman and owning up to it. But it also comes with the responsibility because it's not something that you work once and now look at me. I'm a cool. I'm a badass. You have to wear your badass big girl pants every, every single, single day. day. Right. Yes. So I <laughs> and I, I, I kind of like this whole thing happened very spontaneously. And a couple of days, not a couple of days ago, but maybe like a week ago, I was looking at uh, scrolling on Instagram and um, I follow Elena and uh, one of the, her videos popped up and she did a talk at one of their events about the woman behind and beside the man. And I loved it so much. So I want you to talk about this. Well, okay. So because like, um, obviously everybody's like, and we, we sitting in your beautiful office mm -hmm. and everybody's no grant and everybody's like, oh my gosh, he's the guy, he's the guy. Well, and here's the woman behind the guy. What? No, there's this woman that first of all, holds the guy, pushes him forward. And she is the one that inspires him. And she's the one that encourages him. At least that's what I see yeah, from, a, yeah. from the outside, but she's the one also leading him and being those strong shoulders that a lot of people don't realize that strong men need. Yeah, I agree with all of that. And so, so many times I'm known for exactly what you said. I'm the woman behind the man and, 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 and I don't mind that, but a lot of my women are, want me to say I'm the woman beside the man. And I understand that too, because you know, who wants to be, you know, in the, in the shadows, but the image that I had, isn't the woman that's in the shadows or that's, you know, mm, you know, subservient or can't think for herself. And, you know, even though I do admit that I ride on Grant Cardone's coattails, like I'm like, hey, I'll ride these <laughs> coattails. <laughs> I will ride these coattails. This guy, he, he can bring me a lot of attention. Like, you know, like I'm just not dumb. Like, you know, I learned a, earlier in life you know, I thought I had to be this independent, strong, powerful woman. I thought I had to do everything on my, at my, for myself, by myself. And I realized that I was cutting my nose off and to spite my face. Um, because men, I don't feel like do that. This is mm -hmm. total sidetrack. And then I'll get back onto this. But I feel like men, you, the, the one thing that I love that I see that men do all the time. And I don't mean this in a negative way when I say the word use, but they are willing to use I, I really do have to come up with a better word, but they'll use anyone to help them achieve their mission. Like they don't have any buttons on it. They don't, they're not like, oh, I have to be the strong, independent man. They, they don't lead with that. They're like, if I need help here, here, you do this, you help me here. Da, da. Like they're not afraid. Whereas I feel as a generality, at least for me as a woman, I felt like if I passed it off, then somehow I didn't earn it or it's not mine. So I felt like I had to do everything on my, on my own. But the problem is you can only do so much on your own. You will tap out. And that's when you need your team to be able to push or to fortify or to hold you up or to run point when you can't so that you can focus on what you can do great. Right. And so I've learned that being with Grant, like I've learned, you know, what he can help me get to a heightened level of success i can help him get to a heightened level of success so i have no problem riding on his coattails because what he can do by shining a certain light on me helps me reach more people so i just wanted to put that out there but the woman behind the man the vision that comes to me is this strong powerful woman who can certainly hold her own and support him and be confident and comfortable enough to be able to be in a support um, position. Right. And the definition of support, there's two. There's one is show active, I love that word, active interest in the success of, and the typical support is to bear the weight of something, you know, like That's a support a beam. So I'm willing to support Grant because that is one of my strengths. I happen to be really good at being strong enough to support him and everything that comes along with it. So I have no problem being the woman behind the man because if he were to ever fall, I'm there to catch him and to say, uh-uh, that's not happening on my right. watch. And so, you know, for all the other women out there that are, you know, just the wife or just the uh the mom or right. i hate the just the like let's drop that that right. that takes so much strength to run a family anyone can do a job but can anyone really run and rear 
children who are going to be like contributing members of society, like productive, like that's a big job. It is. It's so it's underestimated. And responsibility. So much responsibility. Like it's incredible. I hate when I hear that. Yeah, but I, I just love it the way you said, because it's kind of like bearing the weight and the responsibility. I was like, uh-uh, I'm not going to fall on my watch. And a lot of people say it's like, you know, man is the head, but everybody forgets that woman is a neck, right? And we're not going to tell the guys, keep it a secret. But <laughs> guess what? Where the head is looking, where the neck is turning. That's exactly where the head is looking. So I, I love that about you. And it's so fun to see because like, I think that Eric and I have some uh, similarities with you guys because, you know, we consider ourselves a two-headed monster. Mm -hmm. You know, we are a power couple. And of course, mm, for a I long time, mm -hmm. Eric was the face of the business. Mm -hmm. Eric was the face of everything. And I was behind him pushing and supporting and guiding and kind of like I was in the shadows, even though I was the one running the show. You know, a lot of people did not know that, right. but I was the CEO and still am the CEO of all of our companies and running all the business, but he is the face. But you know what is really interesting is it takes a very strong and wise man to be with a powerful woman. He needs to be so confident. So he, Grant, and I can see that, he, he adores you, he adores the girls, and he's pushing you forward with his love, with his support, and pushing you in the light of, you know, it's like, that's my wife, that's my girl, that's my Lena. And he talks about that with such a pride, and it shows me that he is not afraid to lose his fame by letting you shine even brighter. That shows me that he's a very strong and a very wise man. And he really is, because it's not just me that he shows the light on. And it's Johnny the camera guy, it's Sherry, it's Jared, it's Ryan, it's, it's, it's a whole team. Right. And he shines his light on others. And it takes a very confident, strong person who doesn't have that scarcity mindset or worried about being ripped off um, to, to be able to do that. Because right. you can't really find many other celebrities, if that's what you wanna call them, of that status who are doing that for their team right you know well, because like in a lot of cases it's like you know they think it's a one-man job a one woman mm -hmm. job that's i got there just by myself and i'm so cool to look at me and they immediately forget who helped them to get there because you never get to the top of the mountain by yourself no you have to have a team you of do. either mentors yep. or people who inspire you it might be books it might be courses it might be events it might be all kinds of different things or just a chit chat conversation with a girlfriend who is a little bit down the road and can help you can push you and guide you in the right, right direction so it's like never underestimate the environment that you are in mm -hmm. and once you get to the top don't forget to send the elevator down because there are a lot of people who want to get all the way up there because here's the thing once you reach certain level of success you um you don't want to be there alone you want to bring as many people that's as right. you can with you that's so you right. can enjoy it together because that's like right. by yourself it's not that's as fun right. it isn't like i want to go on nice vacations with my friends and i want them to be able to have time off if they right. want to or can work from anywhere in the world like uh, you know it's yeah, just i love it. i love my family uh, but i also love my family with others on vacations right. or nice right. dinners or you know you kind of get bored of the same stories yeah and when you can have a peer-to-peer -peer conversation mm -hmm. you know when nobody needs anything from anybody and you can actually inspire and uh fill each other's cup instead of you being constantly pouring into somebody. Yeah, but the only thing I'm gonna to add to that is, I like, the thing that excites me the most is when I can hang out with people who I get inspired by, who, where we can collaborate. Right. So I, I don't really have a problem with needing something or what, like, if it's not one way, Right. Do you know what I'm saying? If it's one way and it's just you need me, 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 and I'm constantly like putting out all this energy and I'm not getting a return on right. that. Somebody like, has to pour back Somebody into has your to cup. pour back, right. Then I can't, then that doesn't work either. But the thing that gets me mutually excited is like, oh my God, I can help you here and you can help me here. And like, then it's like, like then it's a buzz. And I right. love that. I love that. I'm constantly looking to collaborate, which is, defies how I started out because I thought everything had to be independently me or I was somehow not enough. Right. And now I realize that I can fast track my way to success by partnering up or collaborating with other giants and 
get yeah. there faster. Yeah. One plus one in those some circumstances equals 10. Totally. You know? so, Million percent agree. Love it. So you guys looking at, at this book right here. So tell me about um, how did you kind of like, when did you decide that I'm going to write this book? Because like everybody keeps telling me, it's like, Marina, you have like a couple books in your head when you're going to write it. I was like, I'm not going to write a book, but now I'm kind of like, maybe eventually at some point, what kind of like, what was the moment that you says like, you know what, damn it, I'm going to do it. Okay. I'll tell you exactly the moment. Um, Grant had told me for a long time, you need to write a book, you need to write a book. And I was confronted with all the challenges that I had. I'm terrible at school. I hated book reports. Like I can't sit still. Like, like, and I'm not that smart person. Like in that way, I'm very You're smart, street smart in other ways. Yes. Yeah. But in academically, no, like that's not my jam, but Grant we were at a dinner in New York and we were with some friends and Grant was like, you need, you know, I want you to get her a book deal. And so the person picked up the phone and was like, oh, okay, yeah, you can have this book deal. And so I was like, damn it. Now I'm like on the hook. On the like, hook. how am I going to get off of this? <laughs> they just worked a book deal. The book deal, we didn't want it because it like we could have done better with it, but it put me on the hook. And that's when I started writing the book. And you know, that's, that's the thing. And then I stopped writing the book and then Grant called me lazy and a coward because like I wasn't writing the book and that got me furious. And so I stayed home for the last two months and just rewrote and wrote and rewrote to the book to where I was like, wow. And then I got to feel this incredible sense of pride and it rehabilitated all those school years when I thought I was, I was like, wow, I did this. Like, so I learned a lot from that because when I put the book in Grant's hand and I was like, here, take that from a lazy and a coward. <laughs> and he it. was like, you know, I just want you to, he was like, congratulations, but I just want you to know, I never for one second thought you were lazy or a coward. And that's when I realized, you see, our relationship is so different from how other people, how I think other people right. do their relationship, because I think other people do their relationship where they have to prove their love by turning off their electronics and watching TV and holding hands, and that's their version of love. But I realized in my relationship, our version of love is helping someone else to achieve stretch. their goals. Yep. Because nothing makes me happier than when I achieve my goals. And he helped me to do that, right. which made me fall in love with him even more. He, you know, he just knew your love language. He, would, he just knew. It's like, oh, honey. I do can you, love it can at you, the time. Right? Can you just write the book, please? That no, would that, not that work. work. So he no. kind of like gave you like a yes. very loving kick in the butt yes. that motivated you even more. And that's, that's right. yeah. And that's, but now I have my like, like, a, like a legacy play, I you know? It. And it's like... You know, and every time and someone- And that photo, did she, you guys see that photo? This is like, that's holy a moly uh -huh. photo. And I had I these it. wings <laughs> made, you know, by an artist out of Los Angeles. So it's like, it's just incredible. Like, I just, I have so much sense of pride in myself. And you should be. And when someone says they, the book changed their life or they got something out of it, it's like another spiritual reward for me. Absolutely. Because I got off of being greedy with only thinking of myself and my school problems and how I don't like to sit still and all of this and all of that. And I did it anyway. And then it could help some people. But, and that's. I'm knocking on your door. I know. I know. This is what you have to give to others. So exactly. by you not doing that, you're being greedy. Oh, oh, sorry. You see what I'm I saying? You're being part. greedy. I missed that part. <laughs> yes, you're being greedy. You're being selfish by yeah. not giving you to yeah, everyone right. that needs you. See, I just ask for that trouble you myself. See? <laughs> you see? You see? Now I get it, and then I can now just she put out. me on the I'm spot. Like, oh yeah, this feels Ooh. good. You feel Ooh, good. What just happened? What just happened? You surround but, yourself with people who will hold you accountable. Yeah. You but, know, who but, want you to win? Who want you to get to that heightened level of success? Yeah. But you know, and that's that's the kind of like sometimes when we live through different challenges and obstacles in our lives, I think like. I First of all, I do believe that everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. without the challenges and obstacles, I would not be who I am today. Because a lot of people say, totally. it's like, oh, what would you change in your life? Mm -hmm. I was like, just dreaming bigger and faster. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Other than that, I needed all Me of those too. fails. Me too. I needed failures. I needed all of those mistakes. I needed to bang my head about the, uh, on the door or something so I can learn. So I can, first of all, figure out what I don't like, what I do like, who do I want to associate myself with, mm -hmm. who I am, what I'm worthy, mm -hmm. and am I worthy? Mm -hmm. And, you know, all of those different things. Without all those obstacles and challenges, I wouldn't be who I am today. So that's why I 
swallowed your book in one night because it was just like so much in the same kind of like train of thought for me is like that's exactly you know how I started that's exactly kind of like different paths but you know the the theme is the same strong lost it found it mm -hmm. and like when I found my voice and strength back again I made a promise to myself that I'm gonna help a lot of men and women women specifically to help and find their power, to find their strengths, to find their confidence, if they had it when they were little, or millions and millions of other women who did not have it because they were told since they were a little girl that you're nothing, that That's you're right. nobody, you cannot achieve big dreams, and don't you even think about it because you're just a woman, you're just a girl. Like mm. you said, the just. Um, I hate that just. I just, I just, just. Oh. Yeah, so you're not just a girl. you just a creature who freaking raises the generations. Okay, so if if whoever is up there, right, and I don't want to go spiritual on you guys, but whoever is up there, it's like, do you think he would delegate or she delegate that right to somebody who is weak, who's somebody who cannot do things, who's somebody who cannot lead? I don't think so. I don't think so. Me either. So that yeah. leads me to the next topic and I'm so excited to announce all of you guys and you you know that I've been talking about the most powerful women in network marketing for quite some time the event that is happening May 14th through the 16th guess who's coming this woman this woman is gonna be speaking at the most powerful women in network marketing stage and I cannot wait so to hear her turn your world upside down in a good way and show you what it means to be, you know, a strong and powerful and a confident mm. woman. Because like she, like she just told you, and you just had like in the last, what, 10, 15, 20 minutes that we've been talking here and put in the comments below, you know, what you learned from Elena. And obviously you obvious every single person watching it right now has to buy that book because I'm telling you, there are so many nuggets. And what I was also going to say, you know, the life that you lived up till this point, and at some point, like I know you felt like you were giving up and you were not worthy and you're not strong, you're not deserving, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. But you coming out on the other side and you putting it in the book, actually, and in the life, the way you live it today, gives so much hope mm -hmm. to so many people because, you know, the different challenges are given to the strong one just to show what is possible for everybody else. So I just want to make sure that you guys tune in, uh, register at uh, mpw2021.com. The event is absolutely free. I know I'm crazy. The event is free. But you know, my goal is to have at least 150,000, and you don't even know that, 150,000 women attending this event. Oh we already have gosh. over 60,000 registered. What? So make sure you not just register, make sure you show up because there's gonna be no replay of the event. It's gonna go absolutely live from our brand new studio. If you miss it, you miss it. Mm. And Elena might be speaking at the time that you're gonna be turning it off. So. Don't miss it because she's going to be dropping some golden gems and I cannot wait to hear it. Thank you. I can't wait to be there either. You know, no empire was ever built alone. I'll leave you with that. Yeah. It takes a team. In the history of the world, no empire has ever been built alone. So I'm all about team collaboration and reaching heightened levels of success together. Absolutely. And we women, that's what we can do. You know, that's what is my mission. I want to create a movement of powerful women inspiring each other, uplifting each other up, helping and sometimes giving you loving kick in the butt and sometimes you know holding your shoulders and being that support team and mm. sometimes helping you see a bigger vision of what is possible in this life because I do believe everything is possible and one of my mottos of life is live the impossible mm. so i want you guys to live the impossible make sure you register mpw2021.com there are links all over this uh place and in, in the my team is already commenting in chat so make sure you register make sure you show up and i cannot wait to see you there me bye. too bye